one, which is noise variance permit for unit drug forge, 1903 South uh, 62nd Street. I believe that's a normal uh, procedure of uh, renew yes, yeah. renewal of separate, the permits. There's a separate, yeah. there's a separate license, um, license yeah, a separate one. Yeah. Okay. agenda. Okay. So, yeah, so we can take uh, it for me. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. going to just do that agenda. Yeah, let's do this. So what are you starting with? He was reading the wrong agenda for the. Yeah, that's oh. fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. I wasn't. Okay, we'll start with uh, <clears throat> new and previous uh, matters 2022 0899 22 uh, 2024 renewal of operator license, part of operator application for SEP. Manta Liba, part of 316. Samantha, are you here? She's not here, eh? Not yet. Maybe we can pass that one and move on. Give her a few minutes. Yeah, we can wait, sure. Okay. So we go to item 2, 22, uh, 2022 0920, 2022 2024, new operator license, part of the test, for Ember. Lickwick, Bartender 3112. Are you here, Amber? She's not here either. Okay, is this a non appearance? So we should hold it? Or, uh... I'm here with his kids here. So... We'll get to you. Yeah, yeah we, can, um, we can go back. Let's wait. Are these both first time misses, Rebecca? Well, the other one, I, I believe. I think so. I thought we were putting it on the agenda, but. Yeah. I did identify. Um, I believe there was one. And the last. That was a non-appearance the, the first time. The first and one. all the yeah. other people yeah. haven't been sent a notice. Okay, before. we will. Uh, so we can hold one and two then, right? I we mean, can. If we're going to grace one, we'll grace the other. Okay. So we move on to item three, 2022-0902-2022-2024. New operator license, particular test, the operator application for Catherine Wojcicki. Bartender 304. Is uh, Catherine here? Right here? Oh, you're here. So you were here last time, right? Uh, no, I was here to get my license. I've been, um, I grew up in the city, yes. Which is number four. But no. This is number four. I think we skipped number three. You skipped but three. Is Catherine three. Wisniewski. Three. Yeah. Four. Which four right now? Yeah, you skipped item. You right. skipped the third. That's okay. Now That's we're on three. the fourth. Okay. So we're on Catherine Wisniewski. Um, so you're, I'm Nick Serwin. I'm with the city attorney's office. Yes. Um, you were brought in regarding um, potential record issues. Yes. And so I'm not sure if the committee has questions for her or if you have anything you want to opine right off the bat about um, those concerns. Well, just to let you guys know, if you guys have any concerns, I'm never going back. Um, I just got that amended and dropped. I did six months of justice point, GPA. That's what I um, was doing. I did my mental health assessment, AOD classes to finally, you know, get ahead of life. So right now they amended it, which was I happy about. And that's all I could ask for so I can get a job and be here. And that's why I went through all this was that was so I can have everything dropped as of now. And so everything's been amended, everything's all good, and I would like to just continue on what I do because I love bartending, I love being around my people, my community, and my service, and yeah. this what screwed me over for a minute. And so, but I mean, like I said, I've been doing this for a while now, and to tell you the truth, the community, and being back in my city again, it's the best feeling you could ask for. And I would love to get my license. Mr. Chair, yes. Well, okay. Can I just ask a few questions real quick? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so for the DPA, the Deferred Prosecution <laughs> Agreement, um, CCAP says that that was revoked but then amended. So what happened there? Okay, so basically I did six months of community, like I did 15 hours of community service. Mm -hmm. I did, um, which basically we had to do every 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 week, I had to do mental health assessment and DR and justice, or mental health assessment and AOD. And then the following week I had to do mental health assessment and AOD and drug testing. So it was like a constant, like I would have to go in for six months every other week for drug testing and then I'd have classes that I would have to attend to because of, um, I have ADHD, bipolar and everything that's all included so they had to see that in the records um, because I never touched anything like that, that and it was just only possession, they 
that's when they started to see things were changing. Like, there was no way, like, I was doing any of this stuff. So that's why everything got amended to... Well, why is it revoked, though? It's revoked completely. It's it's because the fact is that uh, I did all the, the 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 requirements they asked me to do, essays, the fifteen hours of community service, um, the. So and I'm not trying to interrupt you. I'm just trying to clarify because I used to work at the DA's office. So I know yeah. how these programs usually work, and usually it would have been a dismissal outright. They would have just dismissed it instead of revoking the agreement. So revoking the agreement generally means that something didn't go right, um, but then to your benefit, they amended it to a ticket for $1. So I guess, I mean, does that make sense, or is there... It, there, it does make sense, okay. but um, because the fact is, um, like, I have ADHD and all that, my, my physical therapist was allowing me to do more THC, okay. so that was the only reason why I got dropped down to that, and then the charges that I'm in. So that's why I kind of went, gotcha. and that's where it went into, because um, my therapist, which is my uh, psychologist and my therapist at uh, American Telepsychology, was okay with it uh, because of the, the severity that I have. Okay. Oh. And you know that, I mean, Wisconsin marijuana is... Right, exactly. Yep. And that's why I don't do it, but, okay. you know, but that was, you know, to help you out, but yeah, no. Okay. And no. then <laughs> my other question is, you had said something along the lines of... Um, being happy to be back in My West city. Dallas. Yeah. Where? Where was I before in Cudahy? In Cudahy, and that's yeah. where this occurred. No, actually, it occurred right here. Actually, at the end of the city, but okay. it was not quite. Like, it was a uh, illegal. Technically, technically, I could have sued the 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 city of uh, the cops because uh, it was a rookie. Um, he only pulled me over for speeding, but. Um, it wasn't my car, and I didn't know I had this stuff in my wallet at the time, so I took it, I took the justice point, and I took the DPA, um, because it, the charges were going to be amended, and I wanted it clear off my record. I feel that it, there's no way I could have gotten a job or anything with that, with that stuff on my record. It's embarrassing in life, and it, I don't need that. And what have you done? I know the DPA, the Deferred Prosecution Agreement, and the treatment that you've done, but what measures or steps have you taken to make sure that this doesn't happen again, especially in a professional context where you're going oh, to have to call yeah. the cops? Oh, yeah. No, um, actually, I don't have no problems calling the cops or talking to them, so it's not a big deal to me. I have nothing to hide. I'm always, you know, I went through, like I said, I've been through an abusive relationship. I just got out of it recently. Um, he's actually on a bench warrant right now. And you guys could look that all up. So there was a lot of things that's going on. But like I said, I have no problems with the officers or anything like that. It's not a big deal. I mean, I had to come. Actually, I just had to call them recently, matter of fact, because, you know, somebody just robbed me for $52 at the bar. So, I mean, and it just, I have no problems. I got nothing to hide. Like, hey. I, I like I said I like I said I've changed my life completely. I'm a different person than what I was. So all the things that I just went through has made me realize that you don't need that crap in your life. So you Do you have a full time on. job for any chance? Or? Um, actually, yeah, bartending um, at Harry's as a as a bartender. For the you do at the present time. You're yep. working full time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Are you having your driver license? Uh, I will be getting my driver's license back, yes. Yep. So do you have a temporary driver license right now? You don't, right? No, no, no. It's suspended as of right now. So do Once you have, I have my tickets. <laughs> do you have any more uh, charge pending uh, nope. against your records? Nope. Uh, mm -mm. You can look at my record, nothing at all. Nothing at all, eh? No. Attorney... Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, all of mine. How do you get to work now? Uh, I walk. It's only 20 blocks. How many? 20 blocks. 20? Yep. Okay. I walk back and forth every day. How'd you get here, How'd you get here tonight? Uh, I usually walk. I walk, so. Usually? What yeah. did you do tonight? Uh, well, I drove, but yeah, normally I walk. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I don't I don't risk my license in any type of way or anything like that. I got, I got a licensed vehicle, but uh, no, um, but I walk every day. Um, so you drove here without a license? Well, yeah, technically, but, yeah. Why Why? why did you do that? Uh, in order to get here, I had to. <laughs> but see... And then I go park the vehicle and I walk home anyways. I walk to work every day. I walk it back and forth. I, 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 I I'm so sad about you. Uh, <laughs> you know, it seemed like, uh, you know, 
based on what you tell me, you know, you drove here and what you told the uh, Holman Road. But like I said, I, mean, I how, how can you, I mean, it seems like you're continuing violating in your life, really. I mean, in my, myself, I would never do anything if I have no driver's well, license. I, I would never well, I'm not going to drive the van anymore. No, it was just to get up here. As a, I needed to get up here. But oh, that's usually I walk back and forth to oh. it from work. So, like, it's from home into work is about a 30-minute walk don't you each understand? way. It's illegal. Right. So, so what I'm, you make me concerned about uh, in your lifetime since you, uh, you, uh, been driving or so many other concerns that I have, you know, it seems like you, you just, uh, you look, the issues, uh, you, you oversight it, it's just like uh, you don't pay attention, you know, and you're not a really young woman, you're not 15 years old, you know. I mean, I mean uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, Chair yes. Yes, if I may, um, Catherine, I'm going to make a motion to deny your license, this is based on habitual uh, criminality, contact with the police. You've shown by coming tonight you didn't obey the law. You're driving on a suspended license. That is too concerning for me to think that you'd make good judgment behind the bar. I've always made good judgment. I'll second that motion. On the emotion of denial, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The aye have it. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine, to come. Thank you. Okay, we go back on item three. I apologize to skip. So we are on 2022-2024 new operator license. Barton requests the operator application for Isabel Reset. Barton 322. Isabel, she's here? This is three, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah three. Yes, we go back to three. It looks like that she's not here. So, uh, First non appearance? First time? Yeah. Correct. Um, well, what's your opinion? Hold it. Hold it. We've given grace on everyone. Yeah, so that's so. Yeah, we, we will. It. I'll make a motion to hold. Till our next. I, are you here? Isabel? Hi. No, I'm in Huntersville. Okay, you can have a seat. You can have a seat. Yeah. Okay. So, so the motion there's is an denied. motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The aye have it. That was to hold. I'm sorry for. To no. hold. Okay. Yeah. To hold. Yes. Do you want to go back to one and two? I didn't see anyone new walk no. out. No, I didn't see nobody else. So we just kind of, uh, and and um, I'm yes. sorry, we should be clear that this is a, um, I should have stopped you in the number four there, but this is before we can actually take any action on things. So you can agree on an outcome, but then um, there'll be a recess meeting. We will actually vote through these items. Does that make sense? They We've haven't been that. introduced to the council. They have oh, to be introduced okay, so we first can't. before you yeah. can gotcha. vote on okay. So there'll be actual votes later. All right. So we want to move on to item five now. Mm -hmm. So 2022-2024 new operator license part then request the operator application for real light Pogida Garcia. Are you here, Garcia? She's not here either. Okay. So what's your opinion on that? Hold. Do the same thing? Yes. Hold it? Hold. Oh. Did you need a motion? No. You know? No, because no, we no, we're not voting, remember? Yeah, we just talked about it. All right, we move on to item six, 2022-2024. New operator license, bartender request the operator application for Lucy Borland, bartender 293, held due to non appearance at August 2nd license and held committee meeting. Are you here tonight? She's not here. So I would like to see an emotion of denial. Um, it wouldn't be a motion at this point, but. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. We no. can take note of we that. We can take a note of that. So then we move on to item seven. 2022-0878, new class B tavern license application for Yulani Le Marquis, LLC, DBA, Yulani Le Marquis, 8010 West National Avenue, agent, Yuasha Wilkie, LC22199. You are, Yulani is here, right? Yes. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Good. Good. And just for the record, you are Yutasha? Yes. Okay, Yutasha Wilkes. Did yes. I that right? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Okay. 
So what, I, I know what you're here for, but you have any anything to tell us? Yes, I am taking over Cream City that was on a different national. Um, I will be, it's like an event and a class that I'll be hosting for people to come in and sip and print their own shirts, like make shirts, hats, cups. Um, that location has already had a liquor license and a bar in it, and so I felt like I can take over by adding, you know, my touch to it, you know, as well as offering sip and paint and things like that um, in the store. Thank you. Any questions from the uh, committee members? Sure. Chair. Chairman Vitale. Yeah. Oh. Home, home um, the other license, this would be a subject to, would be surrender before you get your new one, correct? Is that yes. your understanding as well as mine? Yes, Rashad, um, the owner of Cream City, he's moving. So he's leaving out. So I don't, this will be new for me. Mr. Chair. Yes. We haven't actually issued that license. It's been granted, but we didn't issue it. So he hasn't paid for it. For the T-shirt company. For the Cream City, the previous location. For this, for this license period, starting on in was it July first. Oh, this period. Okay, thank yeah. you. So it's been granted but not issued. Because it was unpaid. So it just would be not. <laughs> but that would have to be surrendered. Even the it wouldn't have to be surrendered because it's not been taken. No. It would just be okay. voided. Mr. Okay. Mr. Chair, yes, uh, I'm going to direct a couple of questions to Attorney Sirwin on this as well, mm -hmm. but. Um, you caught my attention with saying that there was a bar in there. Um, the Sips and Prints, what we're seeing a lot of businesses doing is exactly that. I'm not against you trying to have a more successful business, but a class fee, in my opinion, for a print shop uh, doing classes, it would be hard for me to support that. I know that it was issued prior, mm -hmm. but can you tell me about what that meant that there's a bar in there? So who would be serving this alcohol? Where would it be uh, ingested? You know, well, kind of. Well, what I mean by it is like set up where, you know, how the layout of the place is set up. Like you can even call it a counter if you will, but it's set up to where you can kind of have events where we're hosting, you know, sip and paints, sip and prints, um, small events. So. Um, where the community could come in and make their shirts and do things like that. So it's not like a club or anything like that. Would these be private events? Private events, um, people can book online, yes. Is it open to the general public to walk in and if, have beverages? If they book, nope, I'm not gonna do that with the license. You have to book for my classes, you have to book for the events in order to you know, come on the premises. And what type of liquor would you be serving? It would be wine. Anything beyond wine? Wine or beer. Okay. I want to bring to your attention, you're, you're requesting a Class B. That is for full-service alcohol. It, Correct? I believe the application was for both the tavern license, as we call it. Tavern license. Beer and liquor. So technically, she, she wouldn't serve. need that. She could surrender. She could amend that and request she could um correct it, it, that would prohibit you from selling like mixed drinks or something along those lines right because that's where i was going with it it was like okay sips and prints when i've gone to art classes and whatnot <laughs> is usually a wine or a beer yep, you know yep. a seltzer something like that correct. and and you wouldn't need a class before that Correct. I just, when I first applied, I applied for the wine and beer, and I was kind of instructed that I had to, to do the B. So okay. I don't, I wanted it to be exactly what the previous owner had, which is the wine and beer. Okay. So the other owner, Mr. Chair, if I could. Yes. It sounds like the previous owner might have been over licensed if they're not selling that. Um, so the issue is that there's a certain number of class B tavern or, or the full liquor licenses, mm -hmm. uh, but there is not a quota from the state on class B beer. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Madam Clerk, but you would also need a class C wine then too. It would be a B beer and C wine. Right, and the, the C wine 
you have to have less than 50% of your gross receipts for alcohol. So you'd have to make more than 50% of your profits would be, have to be not alcohol. Okay. And it technically says restaurants, but in the state. Okay. And so, so what might have happened on the previous license was to sell the beer or the wine if they might not be able to hit the restaurants, class C was they probably got the class B for the wine purposes. Okay. I would personally like to see it amended to just beer and wine. She, I'm not sure she could do the wine. Can you have them restrict it to just that, though? Um, we can put a condition on the license, correct. And so that's going to be some of my suggestions events. is... Yeah. Um, put conditions on the license at this point, the potential conditions could be um, only for the principal business of a painting or print studio. Both are, well, the painting studio is defined in state law, um, principal business is defined. It could also be uh, a condition to only hold private events and not admit general public to consume. Um, I'm not sure about the condition for types of alcohol, but we could certainly try. She wouldn't need a tavern license, though, for beer and wine, would she? She wouldn't if she was going to apply for the restaurant class C, but I'm not sure she could get that as a print studio. So I think that's probably why, in thinking this through, that's probably why the other owner had the class B tavern, was for the wine purposes. Okay, and if I may, one of the reasons I'm concerned with it is I know that we... Uh, had looked at the amount of licenses we have, and I'd like to put that on record. We were under the impression that we had less than what we originally thought we had. So as the standing is right now, we have 137 licenses. 122 are issued, and there's 15 available. One of my reservations with voting to, to approve tavern licenses in, in a smaller print shop business is what when there's other businesses that do come about and we don't have these licenses available um, because we've given it to to the smaller businesses that don't utilize it to its full capacity is that within reason that I you know that we could look at that legitimately as a council or without having a bias I mean legitimately wanting to know that when businesses are coming into this community we want to make sure that they have an economic e impact that they are investing in the in the community you know, um, and drawing something to the community that's for visitors. That's certainly a consideration that I think the committee should and could have, um, or the council in general. And so just to clarify that, um, the total quota number that we have, I've identified it as 137 because right now we have 122. There's 15 available regular licenses and there's 10, 10 available reserve. reserve reserves. Licenses. So our actual quota, and I don't want to confuse anybody, but our actual quota would be 137, or 147. 147. But anything over that 137 would be the uh, reserve quota, which requires at least $10,000. Right. Uh, I believe that's the right number. Thanks right. for the clarification. Yeah, myself, based on what she really uh, tried to, uh, to do with her business, really, I mean, again, it's not just people just walk the street, uh, just let the regular bar, you know. I mean, uh, wine, you know, if we talk about uh, wine, I mean, it could, to me, it's, it's a customary in many places, you know, really. It's not like a mixed drinks or uh, it costs more wine. I mean, you can get drunk just as well. But the fact that it's beer or anything else can cause just as much damage. So. So at this point, really, I, I think based on what she uh, is looking for, uh, I don't see any problem really for her to uh, follow through on that, really. I, I'm sure she'd be successful, and I don't think she would incur any uh, problem with the uh, location that she'd be running a business, really, I don't. Mr. Chair. So any question from other Mr. Chair. committee members? My, my only issue is this could technically be, become a bar when they're not doing other, when they're not doing events, correct? It could have based on the rule on the law. On the license, correct. If you grant it, it's automatically granted as um, fairly wide open. But conditions are are appropriate and are under our code and under state law that we can put conditions on it. And so that was my suggestion: if you wanted to limit it to or other 
other applicants even tonight or, or in the future if you want to put a condition on that to operate their principal business as an event space or a banquet hall or a restaurant or um, a art studio, paint, print studio. Um, that would be one condition you put on there and that so their principal business has to remain that as opposed to just converting to a nightclub or a bar or whatever they want it to be. Secondarily, you could put other conditions like restricting it to private events only so um, you can't just stop in off the street or drive by and say, I want to grab a beer at the print shop. Um, it'd be for events generally only, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's or you can maybe go in and say, do you have any spots available and book a spot right there and you'll be part of the private event. So you might be able to take it off the street that way, but it's not gonna be just for drinking purposes. Right. So, so with those conditions, you won't have any problem, right? No, because that's what it's for. What that's for. exactly what it's for. So we can just, I think, follow based on what you said there. I think we can uh, And you'll have to vote on this. And you'll have to vote on that. In the future for everybody else, you know. Okay. And basically, there are several <laughs> other taverns in the in the vicinity, and so there, to me, that would be an overabundance of taverns as well. There's one and right I across think, the street, um, right? I think from water discussion, I, I would suggest that you probably go the route that we're, we're indicating for you. I think it would be a, a little friendlier. I'm okay with that because it's really for private events. So I'm okay with that. That was the aim that I was going for. Mm -hmm. But again, when I first applied, I think I applied for the, the, the beer and wine. But then I was told it had to be a tavern. So I was redirected to change it. If you go into the notes, mm -hmm. right. you'll see that I applied for exactly what it was for private events. But I was told it had to be a tavern's license. Mm -hmm. So And Mr. Chair, just to clarify that, though, so, so she couldn't do wine then. If she converts it to a class B beer, um, that would change the scenario with wine because that would be for restaurants. And so I'm going to make sure that everybody's aware of that. So she couldn't get uh, an additional yes. The class C license. is for re restaurants. restaurants only. Okay, I see. Mr. Chair, so I, I would not support our cabinet license person wrote. this time. What's in front of us now? Nothing, technically, but okay, the discussion at Your discussion has been wine, beer, and event only. So right event now space. the actual application is for a Class B tavern, which we is our own design of beer and any other alcohol. That's what the application is for. I would like to see measures of just the beer and wine as a condition. It can't be wine, but, well, I guess you're saying. If, if we give the tavern license. Tavern license. She can have okay, it. Okay, tavern license. Try. And then yep. uh, event space only where it's not open to uh, whoever is walking down the street. To general public. That can be a condition, right, and to use the principal Those business. Those would be two of the conditions I would like to see. So any For the class B. Gotcha. Any further questions uh, from any committee members? And we're not making a motion or anything right not now. Right no, right? Yeah, okay. no, not right now. Okay. So we move on to uh, item eight. All right, thank you. Thank you. So we have item eight in front of us, 20, uh, 220845 new class B tavern license application uh, 10535 bar LC. Give me a Greenfield, Greenfield takeout to 10535. West Green Five and Agent Christopher Trudeau, LC twenty two one nine seven. Christopher, are you here? Yeah. Oh, you too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's great. I mean, they, you know, they were quick. They were quick. What young guys? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what do you guys uh, want to do? I mean, what's what's your uh, why you're here tonight? I know what you're here for. <laughs> Uh, the two of us are partners in a few different businesses. We have one bar restaurant existing in West Dallas, and we have a second one in Cudahy. Uh, our West Dallas location is the Crooked Crow. Uh, we've been there two years now, a little over two years. And about a year ago, we bought the property in Cudahy. We opened up maybe 14 months ago. Um, since then, we've added a full kitchen down there. We just invested like 135 into a brand new kitchen. And with this space, we want to do uh, mostly takeout focus due to the space restriction. It's definitely big enough to put some tables in. We have to lose some of the space because we have to build out two ADA compliant bathrooms. Sure. But uh, it's still big enough to have multiple tables for sit down. We want to focus on takeout just so we can put more food through there. And then we will have a bar in there as well. But it's not a hang out all day kind of bar. 
is not. Right? No. We're not going to put a pool table in there. Okay. Mr. Any questions? Chair? Committee members. Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, thank you for clarifying about the bathrooms because I, I realize it, it, this is connected to the BP gas station, yes. correct? Yes. Okay. When I visited, when it was uh, before us before uh, to open as a restaurant, there were concerns such yep. as the entrance, exit, fire, things like that. I, I recall the design of it. So, uh, uh, so sorry, how did you sorry, resolve those issues or how will you? Um, based off the occupiable square footage after the bathrooms are eaten up, it needs one fire exit, which is the main front door. You don't need a secondary door. We would be willing to add a secondary door, but our architect said it's not required. Okay. That would just come straight out onto Greenfield Avenue. Um, the two bathrooms are required for the occupancy of that space. Correct. The gas station only requires one based off its square footage. The, the gas station has two. And we could redirect the door from the men's room instead of being in the gas station, it could be in there, but we're not gonna do that just because potentially with the grab bars, it would cause, uh, uh, you have to have a circle, a, a certain space around the toilet, and that grab bar has to be within that. It could cause an issue with that, so we're just gonna build out two brand new bathrooms. Okay, and another concern that I had was the amount of parking. Mm -hmm. That's why we want to focus mainly on takeout. Okay. It's, it's partially the parking. There are three spots along Greenfield and then three more spots in the back. And then I believe there's five spots up against the building, but people come, they get gas, people go into the gas station. We can't take all those spots all day. So with that being said, if you're focusing on takeout and people are just gonna kind of run in and run out, it, what would be the purpose of the tavern license? The, it's part of our business model. Like we have two existing kitchens. We can't support ourselves or support a new location simply on food. Okay, so how are you going to sell the, the alcohol? If people are just doing takeout, we, you're gonna we're, offer we're not, seats? We're or? not only doing takeout. We want to focus on takeout, okay, okay. but we absolutely will have tables and a bar. Gotcha, yes. okay, yeah. my, my apologies. No, I was okay. thinking that it was just going to be takeout. The so reason that we want to, to focus and push takeout more is so we can put more food through there. Okay. We do takeout and a decent amount of takeout in West Dallas. We don't do that much takeout yet in Cudahy, mostly because our kitchen only opened a few months ago, mm. but we are getting there. Okay. Yeah, from what I've seen, you guys really, I mean, uh, because the previous, uh, you know, applicant, I think, was not really uh, come forward with a uh, better proposal. I mean, I think it was you doing a lot better uh, At, job uh, the way I see it, you know. In the two years we've been here in West Dallas, yeah, we, we bought that property in uh, uh, March. March of 2020, 2020 yeah. and we took a few months to remodel, but then we opened. <laughs> Sure. Oh, I have that. So, That's any fine. further well, questions? Sure. Since we yeah. opened, what I was saying oh, is we've had zero they issues they with uh, the any any police the issues, nothing. Um, it's in your district. It's and in we have, the sorry, station. the, that we're, we're tied down. for the highest rate of bar in West Dallas. Oh, like, we, we've goodness. shown over time that we can run, uh, the one we can reasonably run an establishment in this community. I'll see if I Yes, the, um, the door that was between the gas station, the restaurant, is that still there? So it's a vestibule, right? There's two doors that come into the square and then two doors, one that goes in the gas station, one that goes into the restaurant. That, okay. But all four of those doors exist. So if you entered into that vestibule, you could go into well, either. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, for some oh, reason, I thought when we were discussing this earlier that there was a door that yeah. you could well, go yeah, in from the gas station yeah, into the yeah, restaurant yeah, right away. Yeah. So yeah. You could exit asking. into there and then go straight in. This is directed to anybody. Does the beep, it's a We're BP, right? Yeah. Make it into Don't a they have a, some sort of liquor license in the gas station as well? They have a class A, but, but the separate occupancy no, I understand that. With okay. the doesn't cause an issue. Yeah. It, as far as state code, it's not state that it wouldn't cause an issue with anything else. So the food would really have to be the problem. So any further questions? Uh, why would you want to serve liquor in, in that bar? We, we, we can't, with food, the, the amount of food costs that we've had, right? We've watched food costs go up and we've raised our menu prices multiple times. But at our place here in Cudahy, we're mainly, or sorry, not in Cudahy, in West Dallas, we're mainly sustained by our liquor sales. 
We, we certainly sell food and people come in to get our food. We have highly rated food. Our bar overall is well rated. We don't have any issues, but we can't, it's not worth opening up another establishment to just have food. The amount that we have to pay, our, our cost just for a cook in the past year has gone up over 50%, and that doesn't even include the cost of food. This location, is this the, uh, uh, it had a restaurant connected to basically the, the station. It's a, but, but it didn't have a bathroom in. Correct. Is correct. that the same station mm -hmm. I'm thinking of? Yep. Yeah. So we're main. Right now it's not. It's nothing. Not, it's not. <laughs> well, it's just it's not it's used as a, yeah, a restaurant. Uh, so we'll, you want to turn it into a takeout restaurant with and, liquor and bar and a bar and sitting area too, just as well. But the people can come in and order drinks then. Yes. Yeah. So I have another question. So since you have limited parking, how are you going to handle if you get too many people and you're now taking up parking spaces that aren't, like, technically aren't yours because they belong to the BP? Well, we're leasing from the owner of the BP. So that would be a conversation, I guess, between him and us. Okay. But there are still, tw I believe, 12 spaces on the property. Okay. And there's not a ton of, there's certainly space for people to sit down, people to sit at a bar, but there's, it's not a, a huge space. Okay. Capacity will be pretty low. Yeah, this gentleman, go ahead. Yes, um, I, know the, I know the facility really well. As a matter of fact, I came in and helped the BP with their license on the security issues that were involved. Um, I've been inside that rest the closed restaurant that's there and it's really small so the amount of people that would be staying there is going to be very limited so the amount of alcohol and beer that they would sell there is going to be small compared to other bars because of the amount of actual floor space they're going to have left after they put in the two bathrooms. Mr. Chair, if I could. Yes. So is the is the primary business going to be restaurant or tavern or bar? Or can you not identify that at this point? I would say tavern bar, and we want to push our takeout food. Okay. So any further questions from the uh, committee members? How many tables do you plan on setting up in that little space? I think we can fit six tables. I'm sorry? I think we can fit six high top tables. So four six. pieces. Yes. The bar is, there's already a, a counter where they used to ring people up at the, when it was um, a restaurant that started with an A. I don't remember the name of it. <coughs> but uh, that counter will be removed and turned into a bar. So basically, if you're sitting at the bar, behind you is the square window that comes from the kitchen. So you'll have that bar. That's not taking up any more space. You'll have stools in front of that, probably eight stools. It's not a very long bar. And then you'll have just high top tables. Is there parking available on the street? I don't think you're allowed to park on Greenfield Avenue. No, you're not Avenue. allowed to park on the street, but there's plenty of parking in in the evening hours where people mostly go out to dine it's is, very crowded uh, there's a bank right next door that has a huge parking lot that could accommodate any overflow so i don't see that as a parking as a problem because people park there anyway and then they go into the vp so it's not like it's not being used already mr chair if i may yes. oh, oh, um question. I just want to add my two cents. I think this is a unique opportunity for you. Um, this has been a vacant uh, space for some time. Being you have a business here, you've invested in the community, you still want to invest in the community, I would support this. Uh, and I just wanted to clarify that with the committee. Yeah, I appreciate that. Because, because it's, it's better to have you in that business than it to remain vacant. I think it will help cross-promote each other's business. You will get visitors who come to the gas station. I know that when it was a restaurant prior to, a lot of the patrons of the gas station appreciate having food. 
Uh, so I, I think based on the size, like you said, I think you could make a go of it there. And there should be adequate parking based on the size of the building. Mr. Chair? Yeah. All in row. I, for one, I don't know how the other members feel. I cannot support <clears throat> this in a gas station. We've had a few gas stations that have got the beer licenses, but not a full-blown bar. But this is... So this, I will... Yeah, let him finish. You know, I will be not supporting it, and I'll put it in the form of a motion, a motion to deny this application. There are no motions. There's, There's no, no motions. motions. Oh, that's at the no motion. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. All right, well, you know how I stand. And, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair, if I just may say, based on what we have already seen as a committee when the owner of BP came and wanted to turn that into a restaurant, knowing the history that we have with fire and whatnot, you're making it ADA compliant. It's a separate entity of the business. It just happens to be located there and that there is no entrance from the gas station to the business. You have to have your business store. They enter into a business. So I wouldn't feel it to be any different than a separate entity business in a strip mall, for example. So it that, is a completely that is my counter argument on that. You know, based on uh, you know, what they're doing, I think, uh, for what I've seen, you know, they, they've done even with the, just with the uh, food, you know, they, they've done good, you know. So, I mean, the, uh, the trend is changing today, you know. I mean, uh, I know. years ago, we used to have a lot of corner bars, you know. People used to come out to work, you know, and that's where they used to spend their life, you know. That's why a lot of people, they used to broke up the marriage on and on. <laughs> but, but today, their life is changing, you know. So many places that like you, you come forward, I, and, I, and I agree. If you don't have that liquor license, you cannot survive, you know. I mean, that's, 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 that's the way it is. I want to be straightforward. I don't like to beat around the bushes, you know. So, so I feel that uh, I'll be in favor for your uh, applications, you know, to get a license. Go ahead. Man. Yes, an another thing to note is in that cubicle that they were talking about. Now, I know for a fact, because I know the people that own BP Station, I know for a fact that they keep that door secure. So the only admittance would be from the from the ent main entrance to to the bar, so it would be it would make it a lot a lot uh, more segregated from the gas station. Thank you. You so indicated, this time we move uh, on, Mr. Chair. The, yes, you indicated that you you're leasing this portion of the building. Yes, mm -hmm. I see. So you haven't purchased the gas station. No. no. You're just leasing. Correct. Okay. I do have a Great. problem. That that lease is. Oh. Yes. That I, lease commend, would... I commend you on the business that you have. You're, you have a very successful business uh, right now in West Dallas, and and that that's appreciated. However, I, I do have a little problem with the the liquor that you want to distribute um, our lease maybe I our lease with the gas station owner is contingent on us getting these licenses and we we don't feel that it's worth our effort and investment to open another restaurant <clears throat> if it doesn't include that so we won't take on this lease if if we end up not getting this I see well, thank the mayor. You for clarifying that thanks mr. chair I just um, I just wanted to speak on behalf, I, I don't know these guys, but the Crooked Crow has been fantastic and people rave about their food and their business model as a, as a bar restaurant has been very successful and I think they said earlier, I was listening on YouTube, that they've never had incidents. It's been a very low-key, successful place. So I think that this would be good. This I always go to the b and B's place across the street <clears throat> and I've always wondered when that's going to get a tenant and I think that this would be a good thing for that side of town to have something independent, especially so close to the Highway 100 corridor that, that would be not a chain. And, um, you know, I, I'm just speaking on behalf of what I've, I've been to the Crooked Crow carryout, like I think you mentioned earlier, a couple times. And um, they run a very successful and just, like, hassle-free operation there. So I think that that 
should be considered when you vote. That's just my two cents. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Chair, uh, yes. if I may, I just, um, real quick question. So if, so this is for the full class B, being alcohol, beer, wine, and, um, and liquor. Uh, how much or, or to what extent do you think liquor will be involved in the business model? And I guess secondarily, do you think you would be functional with wine and beer only? At our current location, our food makes up about 30, 35% okay. of our total sales. And I would expect that to be higher here. But, I mean, just being a spot where people can come in and sit down and just have a drink if that's what they want to do, mm -hmm. I would request that we have the full alcohol license. Just wondering. Thank you. So, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Comment. Chair. Yes. What percentage do you anticipate having of the well, in, beer, in order, wine, or liquor? In order to make this place right. busier in general, we yes. would need to put more food through it. So I would assume it would be closer to 50-50. I see. I'm just give, you know, I'm not sure. It's just at, at our current place, it's thirty percent. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, thank you for coming. You know. So now we move to but item nine. You can't vote right now, but it's going to be during the recess meeting. Yeah, okay. recess. We're going to act upon. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. So now we move on to item nine, twenty twenty two zero eight seven seven. New Reserve Class B Tavern License Application for Phoenix 360 LLC DBA Phoenix 360 1505 South 108th Street Agent Rashida Moss. Hello. Yes, Rashida. Hi, Miss Moss. Hi. I am um, coming back again. Uh, last time I came, um, we were just starting. It wasn't that long ago. Um, but um, we were able to obtain our occupancy permit. Um, there were some issues initially, but we were able to get those uh, figured out, and the building owner of Carpetland helped out a lot. They are building an additional bathroom, um, and with that, we can have occupancy for up to 119 guests. So the business, once again, is a venue. It's a private venue. It's not a bar. Um, we don't want to be a bar. We don't want to be a tavern. I'm a designer. I like to design. Um, and we also have, of course, our 360 photo booth. So we have had some events already, and we have a good um, kind of like turnout of people who want to have events there because there is nothing else like it in West Dallas or the Milwaukee County. We are the only venue that um, also enables people to have this 360 photo booth and selfie booth that is very highly sought. Um, people who go to other event venues, they want it, but the event venue doesn't have it. It's a lot to run it. Um, it takes a lot of software and some knowledge with photography. So um, they have to go to a third party and kind of purchase it and have them come into the venue. That costs anywhere from 900 and up just to have it for a couple of hours. We do it in home, in our venue, because we have it already set up. We have wiring already set up for it, and we're able to provide it for a lower cost, and people can still have their events, um, as well as take advantage of the 360 photo booth and our selfie booth. So we have had a great, um, so far, turnout, even within the little bit of time that we have opened up. Um, we have, I came back because we have events scheduled going out into January, February right now for West Dallas, and some of those events are micro weddings. People who want to have a wedding for about 60 guests or 75 guests, and it's typically at weddings they want to have like a toast or, you know, things like that. We can't even do that because we don't have the ability without having a liquor license. Um, and like I said, this is all private events. We are not trying to be a bar. We are not open to the public at all. Um, everyone who books with me is privately booking with me. They're doing consultations with me. They're going over decorations, designs. This is something that is specific for a particular party. It's, it's just geared towards um, the person who books and what they want and their design and their decor. So this is definitely not anyone coming from off the street. It's like, you know, if you had a small wedding, you're not going to want anyone just coming off the street um, to 
be in your wedding. So this is the reason why we want the liquor license because it will um, enable us to provide these services for people who want the venue, want the 360, and also want to do some drinking maybe with their meal or a sh even a champagne toast. We even have like a, a champagne wall that we've had. We had it custom made and we can't use it because we are not even able to do a toast. So that's why Thank you. I, I like what you explained to us. Any questions? Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, thank you for coming back. Uh, I know there was a lot of confusion and I just want to point out the fact that uh, some of my reasoning last time you appeared was the fact that we thought we had more limited uh, liquor licenses obviously and that was one of my reasons. Uh, however, you've made a very good point in expressing what your goals are for a business. You do mention, um, at least in your email to us, in your summary of business, was that the gauge, you know, we'll use that as, as an example. So in your design, like you said, you've got a champagne wall. You'll have a bar. It's not anyone coming in bringing their own food. It's all catered. You will have the liquor. You'll be responsible for the liquor, the storage, and the servicing of the liquor, correct? Absolutely, and we're not even open outside of private events. Okay, ever. all right. And another concern that I had initially was, and this is probably because you weren't quite set up as an event space, that you stated, am I incorrect in saying that it was 75% of your business was on location at the, at the time. Right. So this will bring, as you stated, the business to you. You won't have to be out on location as often. Correct. Okay. All right. With that, I would show support for you. I think that it would offer you a great opportunity to succeed in business. Mr. Chair. Yes. Could we do this the same way as we did the other one with this, with the condition of making sure it's in there, written in there, only events? Correct. Yes. And that was going to be one of my suggestions is um, if there's establishments like these event spaces, which are becoming more popular, um, and you don't want it to be potentially converted to a bar, then yes. Uh, my recommendation and a little point of clarification I had on that little agenda review was <coughs> something along the lines of a condition on the license that it license not be used for the general public and only used for private events or those patrons engaged in private events or something along those lines. Right. Okay. So any further questions? No. Mr. Chair. Yes. You hold these events um, at play other places other than this location, or do you just have the events at this particular location? So we only have our events at this particular location. Sometimes people will, because the 360 photo booth that we have is so highly sought out, people will ask if we can come to their venue with just our 360 photo booth. And if we right. have the ability to do it and we are not booked up with events, we will. So we do go out, like for instance, we've been to the gauge several times because people want the 360 photo booth. Right. So we will go with our 360 photo booth, but that has nothing to do with our liquor license. We we, we don't bring that over. You don't course. carry that with you Absolutely when you go not. to another event. No, just the our liquor license couldn't. The liquor license is tied to a premises. I see. Thank you. For so that. any more questions? Mr. We can move Chair, on. Go ahead. Mr. Chair, I just want a point of clarification. Uh, Ms. Moss is asking for a reserve license. Can that be amended, be amended here live, or should correct. we amend that on the floor? It can be amended live as you are discussing and voting on it. You can amend um, what she's actually applying for. So yes, that's it. Recess. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And you understand that you wouldn't need a reserve license. You would have one of the licenses that are available. So yes, there wouldn't be that reserve license fee. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We move on to item 10. We're going to hold till next next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to hold that one. Yep. But then we can move on to item 11. New class guitar and license application for 6,500 bucks. Capital group LCDDA lounge 6,500. 6,500 West Greenfield Avenue. Agent Crystal Strong, LC22198. <clears throat> so I know, uh, Mr. Crystal, Chair, I'm sorry. There yeah. was documents that were provided. I believe Kale dropped them off. And so that was a, an email that came through around 520 or so. Just want to make sure everyone has that. Okay. So uh, 
anything changed since uh, last time we talked to you? Or? No, nothing no. has changed. Last time, actually, we did a meeting, you know. Yes, yeah. so no, nothing has changed. We still want to be a full service, casual dining restaurant that's with a full service bar as well. So it, it is the uh, lounge, and then you say you're going to have music, right? Yes, sir. So, uh, based on that, you know, uh, and you're going to be, I mean, uh, who, you know, that's a question. Uh, you be the sole owner of the uh, license, of course, uh, your name is on it. Yes. But who, who's anybody else behind the scene that owns, has ownership? No, I have 100% ownership. So, so there is no second owner, right? No, sir. Because uh, some, some, sometimes rumors flies, you know. Crystal, there yes. is a separate owner of the building. She is, Crystal is looking to lease the, the building. Leasing from, uh, from the owner, right? Correct. Correct. Just for clarification. So, so the owner, he'd be out of completely, doesn't have no uh, control over your license, right? Your business. Correct. So we do have a what we call a percentage lease. Um, only because when we, after the, I was the real estate agent for the purchase of the building as well. And we weren't aware of the, um, the renovations that needed for that building. So the renovations may be about a, over $200,000. So um, we did a percentage lease so he can recoup some of the money for the restaurant because it was my idea when he purchased the building. So for maybe a year or two, um, and we haven't finalized it yet, we'll do a percentage lease, but the business is 100% me. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Chair, what is your experience in bartending? So I ran a tavern in the Bronzeville area in Milwaukee for six years. I was operations manager. Okay, and you left it, why? Well, for one, I'd rather run a, a restaurant than a tavern. Um, nightlife is, really isn't for me. And um, they switched owners. So who's gonna be running it if you're not into running a bar? Well, it's a restaurant. It, 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 it's just a restaurant with a full service. Well, not? No. Oh, okay. My apologies. It's just a restaurant with full service. Okay. My apologies. Yeah, it's not a full Got that. bar, you know. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mr. Chair, if I could. Again, this might be an example of one where you want to put a condition on the license to operate as a restaurant or something along those lines for the, the principal or primary business. Mm hmm Okay. Well, that's up to the committee. Uh, any questions? Uh, all the Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, could you tell me, has this been a troubled bar in the past? It, it has had been. Um, I do believe we went through a revocation process at some point for this bar because of a shooting that took place. Right. I know the whole area um, has undergone some change mm -hmm. recently with the uh, strip club oh, across the street being shut down. The 60 um, bar. Oh, so, the yes, at some point there was problems. It had to be, it was during my time here, right. but there probably three or four years ago, I want to say, ish. Yeah, about four years. Yeah. Yeah, that was... Uh, was shooting a huge fight. Yeah, yeah the second uh, license holder, I mean, uh, when the father had it, it, was running, I think, more efficient, like clean, you know. But then when the son took over, which, you know, it's over now, so, so we got somebody new now that she's uh, looking for the... Uh, Class B license. So, any questions? If you don't, uh, I, I have a citizen that uh, he asked me if we could address some. Uh, he lives north of uh, 65th and Greenfield. Mark, would you like to say something uh, briefly? I mean, less than five minutes. I appreciate that. I'll talk quick. Yes. I appreciate you uh, giving me the chance to speak. Sure. Um, I have spoken many times regarding this property over the years. 
it has gone through a lot of owners and a lot of trouble. Um, I don't know Crystal. I don't know the owner of the building except for what I found out on the internet. Um, everybody who has applied for that license in the past after Scotty, including Scotty, has sat in front of this committee and blatantly lied. They paint you a pretty picture and it's not reality. They're going to tell you what you want to hear to get the license. After that, you know, there's got to be a shooting to get the license revoked. I don't want to go through that again. For the last 15 years, it's been noise, it's been violence, it's been litter, it's been shootings, it's been everything. Just because it says 6,500 on the bar, on the side of the building, doesn't mean it has to be a bar. There's been a lot of massage parlors in West Dallas. Just because the building held a massage parlor doesn't mean we want another one. And I don't know if people are calling you, Alderman, or any of you, Alderman, saying that that's what this city needs is more taverns. I, I don't believe for one minute that this building can operate, can run a legitimate restaurant. We've all seen the kitchen. You guys must have seen the kitchen. It's wings and appetizers at best. It is going to be a tavern. You can call it a lounge. You can call it a pub. You can call it whatever you want. If you put lipstick on a pig, it's still going to be a pig. It is a troubled, and I heard the word today, nuisance or habitual was the word. This has been an habitual nuisance property that does not need to be a bar anymore. Um, the research I've done... I need to ask you, is this Montreal standing behind me, sitting behind me? No. No. Okay. Uh, the owner of this business, here's some of his history. Possess with intent for cocaine, Class G felony. Restricting or obstructing a class, an officer. Fleeing and eluding an officer. That's Manufacturing and delivering yeah. heroin. Yeah. Class F felony. Yeah. I mean, these are all, and this... This is the, the basis of of issuing them another liquor license. Yeah, see, see the question that is, Mark, you know, we have to use some uh, discretions uh, based on, on the law, you know. I mean, uh, she, she's the applicant, you know. I mean, uh, like I said, and I appreciate your uh, concern, and, I, and that's why, you know, I, I said to you, you can come and speak. But the fact is that she's the applicant. If this man is the owner of the building, you know, uh, we don't really have, we have to be cautious how, how we follow through on these cases, really. I mean, it's not the question, if she had reasons or records uh, in her background, you know, but then we can look at, at her, you know. I do understand we cannot, that. You know, we cannot really, <laughs> by, by law, we cannot just, Look at him. I mean, if, if he has, uh, he owns the property. Well, I mean, uh, and he leasing to uh, this person. Well, and he's she applied for. Well, we have to focus on her uh, license. You know? I, I, mean, I uh, do understand that, Mr. Members, Chairman. You know? I definitely so, do. I also want you to consider. So, please consider. Yeah, that. I don't think she's going to. I mean, uh, based on what she, uh, she's not going to be direct a bar where people is going to. Uh, I understand that she's going to have. Uh, Food, I believe is she going to present us with a menu, you know, just as well. Mr. Chair. And, and th that's what I mean. Uh, I, I want to make sure that we do the right thing. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Yeah, yeah she want to say something. Give me one moment. Yeah. If we may defer to Attorney Sirwin, also keeping in time that our council meeting is going to begin in ten just minutes. a matter of 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, this is unique that we would have a neighbor speak at the license and health meeting. So I would just like to defer to uh, Attorney Sirwin. Yes as to what the protocol would be and should be when it comes to that because you're mentioning legalities and this is the person that we take our legal advice yes, from. Yes, and, and, and um, Alderman Vitale did call me in advance and ask whether that be appropriate. I said he's the committee chair and he basically controls who can and cannot speak or, or address the committee. In terms of information that could or should be considered, I would, I would um, rely less on speculative information and more on, um, on kind of operation and, and restricting or controlling a license with conditions or um, 
basically legislation or what you guys can do in committee to make sure that it is operating in a way that you would envision. If there is, it is pretty <coughs> settled law and I'm comfortable in proceeding that if there is, it'd be just as easy as going in and making sure this operating as a restaurant. And if it's not, if it's only a tavern or a nightclub or a, um, a dancing hall or whatever it's gonna, could be converted to, if that condition is on a license, I'd be comfortable moving forward on a, a revocation process on that alone. It's in our code, it's in the state code, it, it, I'm not worried about that. Okay, thank Mr. you. Mr. Chair? Yes, I'll, I'll just ask. If you're doing this as a restaurant, what's the reason why you're open up until 1 a.m.? To be competitive because most of the restaurants in the area close at 11. Mr. Chair, I have another question if that's okay. Yes. Um, you're also applying for a entertainment license, correct? No. A public, I, I believe I thought that was on there for live music and or DJs. Oh, well, they asked me for a percentage, so I did 50% food, 50% drinks, and 10% entertainment because I'm into the arts. So maybe some spoken word, uh, maybe some rhythm and blues, live music. If you were, if, so the committee has the discretion to grant or not grant any license, any new license that comes before them, would you still be, find your business plan operational or functional without that live entertainment aspect of it, at least right now? Yes. So would you go along with that, right? I'm sorry? With with no live music at this time. Oh right? yes, I would. So so that's where we at. So we gotta move on right now and uh, so any more questions? No. Mr. Chair. Yes. Oh, what percentage of the business will be a restaurant? Um I I did a fifty fifty, but I was I did that under the pretense that everybody that ordered a meal would buy a drink. So um, it's, it's, it's hard to say. Um, I the restaurant I will be in the, maybe about in the, 70%. And in the beginning or, or in the front of the, of the facility or the back of the facility. So the restaurant would be in the entire facility. So um, in our the restaurant will be the entire facility. Correct. So we have a bar with 12 seats, but then we also have 58 seats and I believe 18 tables for the restaurant. Okay. And um, it's a large, it's a large building. Do you plan on living on site? No, ma'am. Okay. What do you plan on doing with the upper part of the facility? That has not been decided yet, um, but it will not be part of the restaurant. And, and you understand that, so that might be something to look forward to or look at is what, what the premises entails. And so you could limit it, the premises to the first floor or something along those lines so alcohol can't be served or, or brought onto subsequent floors or whatever it may be. So oh, just yes. another yeah. option to be clear. I thought it would be like a living quarter, right? I mean, uh, that's... Um, um, the owner flirted with the idea of it being an Airbnb, a co-working space, but as far as I know, he hasn't really decided. Thanks, Mark. Thank you very much. Yeah. But anything okay. else? No. So, uh, so we when can, you, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. So when you lease this building, you will lease it in, in its entirety, the whole building? No, just the first floor. Just the first floor. Yes. So do we have to indicate that then? I would say so, just to be safe. Yeah. Okay. So if and when, if it's approved, and any conditions or anything that go on it, um, the premises. There'd be a stipulation or an agreement that the premises is only the first floor of XYZ address, 6500. Do we have to state that? I would, I would ask you to, yes. Otherwise, it's the entire building of that. Right. Could be used well, that, that, that would be concerning. Okay. Yeah, that was my question just as well. So that's why. Thank you. So if we, uh, at this point, uh, we're going to come back at recess and then uh, we'll make the uh, final uh, decision. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So anything else, come forward to the uh, committee members.
Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. What are these people here? Are, are you here for license and health? Uh, This is the other Okay. All right. Well, I made my motions. Second. All in favor, motion up. To adjourn. Aye. Adjourn. Aye. Please. Proposed the I have it. Thank you, guys. So, other than the tally, the council has a motion to adjourn.